Today's quake, a strong 3.7 magnitude earthquake hits near Valles Caldera Supervolcano, New Mexico. This is a volcanic field and this is it, Capulin Volcano. And it's one of the few volcanoes in the United States where you could take a paved road to take you all the way up to the top of the crater. This is Valles Caldera and you can see the formation of it from the air, how huge it is. This is just sitting north of Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is a, the volcanic fields right there. And Valles is right there around 12 o'clock. And the volcanic rocks all around it. Let's take a look at the map and then we'll talk about what's involved here. Okay, here we are. It's about six, kilometer, uh, six miles depth, about uh, 10 kilometers depth. Capulin, New Mexico. And the... Um, about uh, 300 people reported feeling it. There's not that many people living out there. A lot, most of them live in Albuquerque. That's Albuquerque. Albuquerque was shaken. And um, the Rio Grande is here. And this is the area of Valles Caldera. This whole area here. Now, going to the aerial map. And the shake map intensity, as you can see. Now, if you extrapolate these shake intensities, you can see that most of New Mexico there has been shaken. Extrapolate them. I don't know why USGS just cuts them right off like that. And the general area we have here, if you extrapolate them, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't venture to say it even shook Salt Lake. Now this is Baja, and this is where a magma, a mantle plume comes from, supplying magma to the west coast, San Andreas Fault, and the Walker Lane Fault System which has the high threat volcanoes of California. This is the Salton Sea, which is a, a mud volcano that has a geothermal plant there. Ridgecrest, which is a coastal volcanic field, which has another geothermal plant there. And right there is Long Valley Caldera, which has another geothermal plant. And as we see, taking off the uh, small earthquakes, we have a lot of uh, Quakes hitting around the Long Valley Caldera, just east of that in Mina, Nevada, right there. But that uh, earthquake, those earthquake swarms have been going on daily, and uh, they're not small. And that means that something's going on there with the magma. Now this is it right here, the Valles called the Valles Caldera area, and that's the Capulin Volcano National Monument. The Capulin Volcano. Right here, in New Mexico, northeast New Mexico, it's an extinct cinder cone, part of the Rato Clayton volcanic field. The road spirals gradually around the volcano. Visitors can drive up to the parking lot at the rim of the extinct volcano. Now they say extinct volcano. Extinct doesn't mean anything because of the fact that extinct volcanoes in Russia on the Kamchatka Peninsula were so extinct they didn't have them on the listing were found to be filled with um, magma and they had to evacuate city uh, towns around there. Now we do have we do have uh, volcanoes around Mina, Nevada. Nevada is also full of volcanoes. They say some of them are extinct but look when you have magma under it it doesn't mean that it could be that's always extinct because we've seen even in um, the uh, Baik Tu volcano of uh, China, North Korea, which is another supervolcano, is being filled. It's filling with magma. And uh, it's uh, got the uh, geologists very worried that an eruption may be near. So now going back to this. Okay, this is our shake map intensity. And uh, 300 people reported. There's not that many people uh, living there, obviously. Now, the age of the Capulin volcano, uh, relatively young, 55,000 to 62,000 years old, symmetrical cinder cone, rising steeply from surrounding grasslands at an elevation of 8,182 feet above sea level. And um, concerning now what's happening nearby in that area, the Valles Caldera, Jamez volcanic field of New Mexico, it's a supervolcano. It's 14 million years to, uh, old to uh, uh, 40,000 years old. 
one of the largest young calderas on Earth, type area for resurgent ash flow calderas. And uh, it uh, has a composition of rhyolite, dacite, and some early basaltic eruptions. And uh, when you drive out or hike through Jamez Mountains, you're looking at a landscape created by young volcanic eruptions. The Jamez Mountains are volcanic mountains, young eruptions. Eruptions have continued intermittently from 14 million years ago as to recently as 40,000 years ago. The Val Valles Caldera is a supervolcano eruption, like Yellowstone, in other words. One of the largest young calderas on Earth, Valles of New Mexico. It formed about one million years ago when multiple explosive eruptions occurred that produced an immense outpouring of ash, pumice, and pyroclastic flows. It's considered by geologists to be still active. The volcanic fields differ from the more popular conception of volcanoes like Hawaii and large volcanoes of the Cascades, like uh, uh, Mount Baker, Mount St. Helens. Instead of one big volcano, volcanic field consists of clusters of many smaller volcanoes. Overall, they are all characterized by many small centers of eruption, one to a few kilometers across, of fundamentally basaltic but ranging more silica-rich compositions. The Jamez volcanic field is different than uh, in that it began 14 million years ago as a normal volcanic field with the eruption of many small volcanoes and then experienced at least two extremely explosive volcano eruption events, the most recently being approximately, you want to guess, it's just one of the three recent Yellowstone volcanic dates. Remember Yellowstone was 2 million years ago and then 1.3 million years ago and 640,000 years ago and then 70,000 years ago and then another 80 eruptions since that. Well, this one here was 1.2 million years ago. Okay, the most recent eruption 1.2 million years ago formed the Valles Caldera. So that's quite close to the uh, Yellowstone date, don't you think? It formed the Valles Caldera and resulted in the eruption of Bandelier Tuff, a thick ash flow that covers most of the earlier volcanic rocks from the field. The Valles Caldera eruption differs from other volcanic eruptions. It's not the type of eruption where the summit peak is blown off and a crater is formed at the top of the large volcano. A caldera forms when the ground collapses into the magma chamber. As the magma is erupted in a series of explosive eruptions, Yellowstone and the Valles Caldera are similar and two of the best examples of young calderas in the world. Now, how old is Valles Caldera? It formed by collapse in a series of eruptions from 1.4 to 1.1 million years ago, but the geologic evolution of the caldera has continued up to today. And uh, what type of rock has been erupted at the Jamez Mountains here? Basaltic lava flows, ash, pumice, and ash flows. As Valles Caldera formed, air fill, uh, airfall ash and pumice must have covered most of New Mexico and the neighboring states, Utah, Arizona, Colorado, and has been identified as far east as Kansas. Pyroclastic flows moving away from the caldera formed and what today is known as the Pajarito Plateau and the sites of Los Alamos and White Rock. And after the caldera formed, later eruptions form domes and flow of rhyolite and obsidian that occur in a ring within the caldera. Now, this is a supervolcano in that um, calderas occur when multiple volcanoes of crack erupt in a series of eruptions, not from a single volcano or in a single very large eruption. It should be noted that volcanologists currently use the term super eruption to describe an eruption of several hundred cubic kilometers, but there's no definition for a super volcano. Presumably, the non-volcanologists can be excused for the time being, at least if they wish to refer to a volcano that hosted a super eruption as a super volcano. Now, why is the Valles Caldera supervolcano located here? The Jamez Mountains, located along the western margin faults of the Rio Grande River, the rift, it's a rift. We know that wherever you have a river, you have a fault line. So it's a rift and are, are associated with the volcanic activity of this youthful and still active continental rift. The entire mountain range was built by a long record of many volcanic eruptions and the Valles Caldera was formed by multiple and long-lasting magma bodies merged into a large magma chamber. Now, 
Will the Valles caldera erupt again? This type of volcanism has a slow tempo, even though the caldera appears inactive because it grows over with the tree, it, it, it's grown over with trees and greenery. It's probably looking like that for most of its history. The presence of hot springs here shows that the caldera is part of a large, long-lived and still active system. And we have beautiful pictures here. We see the uh, mountains of uh, off uh, north of uh, Albuquerque. This is where we had our uh, quake, the Capulin volcano quake today, 3.7 out of nowhere. So um, the Valles caldera is so large that the profile of the caldera rim looks like an ordinary mountain range on the horizon north of Albuquerque. The snow peak uh, over the Rio Grande down the to, for example, 3rd Street, downtown Albuquerque, the central uplift of the caldera, it's slightly offset, and it appears uncentered on the rim profile. It has a huge magma chamber, a resurgent uh, magma chamber underneath, and it's rifting. It's, in other words, the, uh, the, United, the Earth is growing. And even the United, the United States is growing. Okay, so here you have uh, one to one million years to present caldera floor, bulging, and ring domes, obsidian flows. Uh, the most recent is at the bottom. Now, the caldera is a result of collapse following the eruption of rhyolite magmas for a large magma chamber. There was no large volcano prior to the collapse, just many volcanoes all clustered in the same region. This is what makes giant caldera somewhat different than the type of volcanoes that most non-volcanologists have in mind when they think of a volcano. They are broad areas of intense volcanism rather than a single giant volcanic mountain. Now the floor of the caldera was occupied by a lake shortly after the collapse event, but it was short-lived because the floor of the caldera bulged upwards over the next several tens of thousands of years to 100,000 years, resulting in the larger mountain in the center of this caldera. Redondo Peak, the floor bulging upward when it rebounded or resurged after removal of the weight of the erupted magma and because new relatively degassed magma gradually inflated the top of the magma chamber, it was at this time that a series of viscous lava domes were erupted around the central bulge. Hydrothermal activity in uh, Valles Caldera, although young and metamorphically better developed than Yellowstone, Hydrothermal activity in Valles Caldera is limited. It's due in part to the relatively drier environment relative to Yellowstone. It's also a function of the slightest greater age of the Valles system. Numerical models of heat transfer by fluid convection around large rhyolite magma chambers show that the rate or heat loss is great, and unless continued magma injections occur to replace the heat loss, the thermal system will decline. So the Valles caldera has been cooling for about 1.1 million years since the caldera formation eruption and about 500,000 years ago since the last rhyolite dome eruption inside the caldera. So we have um, the uh, mantle plume from Baja, as we said, going into the area of uh, California under San Andreas and also the high threat volcanoes, Walker Lane Fault System. But uh, we have the eastern branch going into Utah, going up into uh, Yellowstone, and then making a right turn west under uh, Idaho. Now, we have had the, the uh, March 18 Utah 5.7 earthquake. We've also had the uh, five, uh, 6.5 magnitude two weeks later in uh, Idaho, 6.5 out of nowhere. And of course, that those have shaken Yellowstone as well. The geologists of Yellowstone have told us that they expect the hydrothermal and plumbing system of Yellowstone to change because of those, and not the uh, supervolcano of Yellowstone itself. So we have to keep, keep an eye out on this, because this is a 3.7 magnitude earthquake uh, in uh, the area of um, another supervolcano of the west coast, well, west coast, southwest, of the Valles Caldera. And all of you up there, please be very careful. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my 
Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.